All right, so the revamped beginners pack just dropped on global. And if you guys are pay to play players, then I would advise you to go and pick up this pack immediately because when it comes to value for your money in this game, it really doesn't get better than this pack right here. Now, of course, if you are currently free to play and you've never spent money on the game before, then you should definitely stay that way because spending money on gacha games is a slippery slope, guys, okay? You might think it's a one-time purchase, you might think it's a one-time thing, but they eventually always get you again. And once you make that initial purchase, it becomes much easier to justify future purchases. And obviously this is coming from personal experience, so that is what I would recommend for free to play players. Now, it's your money, so do whatever you want with it. And you know, if this happens to be the thing that breaks your free to play uh, virginity, if you will, or your free to play status, um, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but I just feel like if you've been able to, you know, stay free to play for a good amount of time, you might as well just stay that way. Anyways, uh, with that said, this is a really good pack, guys. Okay, so for $9.99 USD or $13.99 Canadian, you're getting 50 Dragon Stones, which is a full multi, this Power Surge ticket, which can be exchanged for a very powerful unit in the Baba Shop, and we'll talk about the selection in a second. And uh, on top of that, you're getting some Zenny from the Hercule statues, some Awakening Medals, which are obviously useful, some uh, training items, the Z Swords, a few locations, uh, some aged meats for stamina, and finally, a few uh, event keys, the story keys, challenge keys, and Z battle keys. So these things are not really that important. The main value from this pack, of course, comes from the 50 Dragon Stones, which for 9.99 USD is just amazing value. You know, usually for that price, you're getting like 20 to 30 stones, but you're getting a full 50 here. And on top of that, you get this power search ticket, which uh, provides you with a great selection in the Baba Shop. So let's pop over to the uh, Baba Shop right now and take a look at the available units. So uh, yeah, with this ticket, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 options. And I will tell you guys immediately right now, the top three for me are either Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, who is still extremely, extremely powerful. And then we also have the final form Angel Frieza, who can transform into uh, Angel Golden Frieza. And this dude is still, I mean, in my opinion, one of the better TURs in the game, probably still somewhere in the top 10 at this time, both defensively and offensively, uh, mostly defensively, but his offense can be very good as well. And then we have the Int Broly, which I find to still be quite impressive, but I think he's maybe slightly below the other two. So for these three, I would rank them Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta number one, Fizz Angel Golden Frieza number two, and then Int Broly number three. And these would be the top three choices for basically anybody but of course when it comes to these videos it always depends on you know what you need what kind of teams you're building how long you've been playing the game and all those factors right now from there let's uh, take a look at some of the other units in the selection starting with the sdr namek saga goku now this guy has a good leader skill super saiyans or planet namek saga key plus three hp plus 130 percent and attack and defense plus 170 percent um, Super Saiyans is one of the better categories in this game. It's very, very strong. So if you're able to put together a Super Saiyans team, then obviously he's not a bad option as a leader. But as an individual unit in terms of his own performance, um, he's pretty outdated at this point in my opinion. Um, his damage is pretty abysmal and uh, his defense can be good he can be good but he's not nearly as good of a defensive stacker compared to a lot of more recent units like obviously the tech ultimate gohan the fizz angel frieza and so on and so forth so even though he is a stacker you have to get the super saiyan transformation first and then he stacks from there and he's not really building his defense quite as fast or as fast as 
you would like him to. So for that reason, he really wouldn't be a priority in my opinion, unless you just really like this unit, you like his animations, because he does have some beautiful animations, and uh, you also really need a Super Saiyan's lead. Otherwise, not a great option for the time being, until of course he gets an Extreme Z Awakening at some point in the future. Uh, after that, we have the uh, Tech Trunks. Now this Trunks is a better option in my opinion, because not only is he a Future Saga lead, but he's also a all super types leader. Key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 120%, so a very versatile leader if you guys are newer players and you just need to throw together a team of super class units, then this guy is very useful for that. And then individually, um, he is also kind of outdated like the Goku, but not as outdated as Goku is. His damage is kind of lacking, although once you get to his final transformation, he will do some good damage, and uh, defensively, he is a really good stacker, so if you're in longer events, he will be very, very tanky. So uh, yeah, this Trunks is a pretty good option, I would say he's kind of like somewhere in the middle of the rankings on this list. Alright, so number three, we have the Super Saiyan Blue Kaken Goku. Now this dude, once again, a good leader. He gives reps of U7 or Universe Survival Saga. Key plus 3, HP plus 130, attack and defense plus 170. Um, but he is not very good defensively. Uh, it takes him a long time to fully build up his passive, and even when fully built up, he's really... Let's just say attacks against him are very scary in some of the harder events in the game, like the Legendary Goku event, Legendary Vegeta event, Super Battle Road, like he's not really someone you want to put in front of multiple attacks. And if he takes a super, a lot of times, he will get you killed, you know, even when fully built up. So he can put up some impressive numbers offensively for sure, but I don't like the fact that it takes him so long to get built up. And he has a very cool uh, active skill that can nuke for a lot of damage, but it's kind of restrictive. Um, you need to have at least four reps of U7 on your team, including this guy. So basically him and three other U7 units, which means that uh, on a lot of teams that you would want to run him on, you won't be able to get that active skill unless it's U7 or uh, Universe Survival Saga, right? So um, not a bad unit by any means. No unit on this list is bad. I will say that there's no bad units, but he's also not really a big priority right now until a future Extreme Z Awakening. So after that, what else do we have? Uh, we have the AGL Bardock. Okay, AGL Bardock is a leader for low class warriors and revenge, two categories that I feel like are not amazing um, at the moment at least. So I wouldn't necessarily get him for his leader skill, but as a unit though, he can be very, very good, both defensively and offensively. He is a defensive stacker, just like a few of the other units we talked about, so he can be extremely tanky in longer events. Um, the issue with this unit, though, is that he's a little bit niche, I guess. He's a little bit restrictive in the sense that he only is at his full potential, his full power, when you're facing wicked bloodline enemies. So without that, he's good, but not great. And uh, if you're only going to be able to get his full potential against Wicked Bloodline enemies, then that means he is kind of a limited unit in that sense, right? So definitely has the potential to be very, very good, but not really on all events. That's why he's also another, I don't know, to me, mid-tier unit in this selection, okay? Um, we have a couple more here. Let's see. Okay, this Gotenks is uh, just all around very solid. He is a special pose or youth category leader. Uh, special pose is it's pretty rough to say the least, but youth can be very, very strong. So I think he has a decent leader skill and, uh, you know, he has three transformations. Um, the only thing I'll say about him is that in his Super Saiyan transformation, there's a lot of RNG involved where you know, you never really know what kind of performance you're going to be getting from this Super Saiyan Go tank, since there's a chance to get like 50% and then another chance to get 50%, and sometimes he doesn't get either one, so he's kind of weak on those turns. 
and uh, it also takes a really long time to get to the Super Saiyan 3 transformation, which is obviously his most powerful state where he's doing a very high amount of damage and also getting some good defense. Uh, I believe from the start of the event to eventually being able to use this active skill, it usually takes about seven turns, which, you know, is a lot. And for Dokkan events, uh, a lot of times you won't be seeing this transformation. And even on like Super Battle Road sometimes, you're not able to see it for the entire event. So that's the only real knock against him. Otherwise, just a very solid unit all around. Um, what else? Oh, the... Uh, Majin Buu, or the Exchange Good Buu, Slash Evil Buu, Slash Super Buu, eventually. Uh, this guy is good. He's good. He was the counterpart to the Int Gotenks in their Dual Dokkan Fest. And um, he doesn't really stand out, really, in my opinion, in, in any way. Like, his damage is not great. It's okay, but it's not great. And uh, when you get to Super Buu, he will hit quite a bit harder. And uh, his defense, you know, even though he doesn't actually get any defense buff on his passive, he gets 50% damage reduction, which can make him a pretty good tank, but it would have been nice for him to actually get some defense on top of that to really uh, make you feel secure, make you feel, you know, safe about using him as a tank. So he has a bit of a strange kit, in my opinion. Um, not to say he's bad, but I would probably pick the... Go tanks over the boo between the two. And finally, the only unit we haven't talked about here is the Tech Shinemba. Um, kind of a wonky unit on its own, but good leader skill for extreme types. As you can see, he gives Corroded Body and Mind, Q plus 3, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 170%, or Extreme Class, Q plus 3, HP, Attack, and Defense plus 130%. So if you need a good, very good actually, Extreme Class leader, like all Extreme leader, then this guy is a very good pickup. Now, the reason he's wonky, the reason that a lot of people don't like him is because he has no key links. So it's really hard sometimes to get his super attack off if you aren't running like key plus four leaders or a lot of support on the team to provide key. And this guy actually is a support himself, but in order to get the uh, you know support for extreme class, you have to get four or more type key spheres, which is, pretty hard on a lot of turns, you know, like you're not getting that regularly, so yeah, I don't love this unit individually, um, I think his performance and his kit is just kind of weird, kind of like the uh, Super Boo, in my opinion, once again, but, you know, for an extreme leader, he is very good, so if you need that, then he might also be a good go to so uh that basically does it for the selection guys i know i talked a lot this probably went a lot longer than it needed to but um i wanted to be as in depth i guess as possible to give you guys a good idea of you know how good each unit is and who maybe you should go for depending on your needs and your current situation and uh, if i were to give just a quick ranking here i would do Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, number one. Uh, Final Form Angel Frieza, number two. Int Broly, number three. Um, and then from there, I would probably go... Go Tanks, number four. Trunks, number five. Boo, number six. Janemba, number seven. Or maybe Janemba and Boo are interchangeable. That's a bit of a tough one, actually. I'm not really sure about that one. And then... Um, after that, Bardock number 8, is it? And uh, SSB KK number 9, and then the STR Namek Saka Goku number 10, or something like that. It's kind of tough to actually rank these guys, because like I said, they can all be good, so it's not like anybody is a bad choice. So there you have it, guys. That is my opinion on uh, the selection here. Hopefully, it helped you guys decide uh, who to pick with your ticket. And uh, real quick before we go, let me just not be a hypocrite and pick up this uh, beginner's pack because I've been telling people to go buy it so I can't not buy it on video, right? So I'm gonna go enter my information and I'll be right back. All right, so we bought the pack, got our stones, got our ticket, and I'm actually not 100% sure who to choose here because 
most of these guys are rainbowed. Uh, I'm not sure which one is still a dupe I could use. Janemba seems to be my best option. So Janemba it is. There we go. And uh, let me know in the comments down below who you guys decided to eventually go with. With your power surge ticket. And just a final reminder for free to play players. If you happen to be watching up until now. Stay free to play for as long as you can. Once again, your money, do whatever you want, but that's just my recommendation, all right? So <laughs> that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel. If you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.